Hey everybody, um, Joseph here again. Sorry it's been a while. I got caught up with like midterms and school and everything and then uh, was just going through the comments again today and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty surprised. I like, I posted the video on there, you know, just thinking like, all right, this is just for me, this is gonna be like my little diary going forth, but um, I was super surprised at some of the con uh, comments that, y that you guys left and so, Honestly, just want to say thank you. Like that was so interesting. A um, couple of you were just saying how you were in my shoes uh, 10 years ago and then now you guys are doing eight figure businesses and a couple others were saying that you guys are right there with me. So we're on the same track, you know, uh, which is sick. So I just want to say thank you. Like that was just reading those really just uh, hit me differently. And so um, was awesome to read those. Um, I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about today, and I guess the biggest thing that, um, well, we'll get into some gossip real quick. So I went on a date with this Colombian chick, and yes, um, I really have a thing for Latinas. I don't know why, but like I have tried the whole, uh, you know, American girl stuff, um, but it's, I just, I don't know. I just, it's not for me. You know, everybody has their type, and so... Um, I'm big into Latinas. And so when I went out with this girl from Colombia, we were just chatting it up and I was talking to her about like where things are at, you know, with life. And we started talking about, um, service projects, which was really interesting. And so really, I, I know I haven't really mentioned this before, but I love serving. Um, and so basically every year, ever since I've been 12, my dad, I go on a medical mission with my dad and some of my siblings and some family friends, whatever. We go down to South America. We've been to Panama, El Salvador, Colombia. Um, but recently I started going down to Ecuador and I stay in an orphanage um, down in Ecuador for anywhere between three to four months, um, usually in the summers, just because I really want to learn about orphanages. And I was talking to her uh, to this, this Colombian chick, I was talking to her about one of these experiences I had down in Panama with uh, women that had been saved from the sex, sex trafficking industry. Um, and that, I would say, is probably like the moment in my life where like, really just like put me in a different perspective of, you know, why I want to be wealthy. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, they talk about like they want the dollar, chasing the dollar and stuff like that. And like, yes, yeah, sure, I, I, I really am, for sure, 100%. But at the same time, I know that money is just a resource, um, a resource that should be used to help others. And so um, I, I wanted to talk about this, just kind of share my perspective into it. And uh, I'd love to hear a little bit of what your guys' thoughts are. And obviously, uh, everybody has different reasons, you know, in life. And so um, one of the things like for me, when I say that I want to serve for the rest of my life, which is why I'm trying to work hard now, um, is I do have a legit number in my mind of when I will say I'm done and I will just go serve for the rest of my life. And it's $100,000 a month. And the reason that it's $100,000 a month is because I want to start orphanages in South America and I want to change the system. Um, just a real quick background um, about uh, the whole Panama situation that kind of changed my perspective. Um, I went down to Panama when I was 16, I believe. and No, 17, because I just got back um, from Switzerland. And when I was in Panama, um, what we, we basically work in an orphanage, right? And I spoke a little bit of Spanish. I had high school Spanish, right? And so, but you also have to imagine, I went with doctors that had literally no Spanish. And so they basically said, anybody that speaks some, some Spanish, uh, will be the group translator. And so I was put into a group. I was assigned the, the to be the group translator and I'm with four other individuals. And while I'm uh, for their adults, I should say, so we are all split into different vans. And while I'm in this group with these um, adults, we're just talk, we're just chatting, you know, in the van. And we're told, yeah, we're going to be spending the whole day with a bunch of girls that have been saved from the sex slave industry. And while uh, we were just chatting in this van, the door just swings open, right? And a bunch of little girls get in. And when I say little, I'm talking about legit six years old to 12 years old was the oldest in our group. And the youngest in the whole entire group was four years old. Um, and so we're, I, I personally was not expecting, I was thinking like 18 plus, right? Um, you know, I come in with that type of mentality, just 
you know, because I'd never experienced anything like that before. And so while we're talking with these girls, you know, they're very shy at the beginning, obviously, you know, it's just a group of random adults that they're all white people, you know, like, um, and they don't speak their language, right? And so I was the only one that was able to talk with them. And so I was trying to, you know, have some small talk, be like, hey, how are you guys? What have you guys been doing today? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so we go to the Panama Canal, we're just having fun with them, we're trying to get them comfortable so they can start, you know, uh, really not being shy anymore, you know, and as I am talking with them, this, these group of girls just latch onto me, um, and I say that in the physical sense by, like, they were, like, grabbing my hand and they were just trying to like, pull me around everywhere and stuff, but at the same time, that, I mean, emotionally as well, um, because I'm the only one that was able to translate, and so, while we're going through the Panama Canal, we start talking to them and they start opening up. And then after we go to get some food. So we get to some lunch and we all get them, you know, some hamburgers, whatever they want to eat, really. And we're talking to them. And this is when they started really opening up. And so I'm sitting in this group of four to six um, girls um, and they're just starting to talk about, you know, their experience in the sex slave industry. Um, and they start talking to me about how they were sold by their uncles or they were sold by their mothers or they were sold by their family. It surprised me how much of it was literally, literally because they were sold by their family, literally. And that hit me so hard because I love my family. I, I'm so blessed with, uh, have to have a great family, but like, it was just so insane. And they started going into details about what was going on that they were seeing and, um, and what happened to them. And I was just so just devastated. And I just, I, I had that like that brotherly but fatherly instinct kick in where I'm like, I would literally kill somebody. Like I, I legit want to go and, and really hurt that individual. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say that on here, but I, I would really, I, I really just felt so emotionally charged in that moment when they started talking to me about what was going on in their lives. And then all of a sudden my dad comes up and says, Hey, we want to give them a little present. We're going to go shopping for them. And we gave each one of the girls $20, 20 us dollars because in Panama they use dollars. And we go to the store and I'm with these girls and I'm asking them like, all right, what do you, what do you want? You want this, you know, this dress or these shoes or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I promise you without fail, a hundred percent of the girls, a hundred percent of the girls, first thing they said is, where's the boy aisle? And I said, uh, it's over here. Why, why is that? I want to buy something for my little brother. Or I want to buy something for my mom. Or I want to buy something for my sister. And I was just like, shocked. Um, because the first thing that they thought about in that moment is when they get money, they want to give it away. They want to literally treat somebody else and serve somebody else by making them happy. Which, if you think about it, is just so beautiful, right? These girls, they would, they would spend all their money. And the, I, the, the only girl in our group that bought something for herself, it was, it was at the very end, it was only like 20 cents after she'd spent the other $19. It was like 20 cents, she bought a little sucker. And none of the other girls bought anything for themselves. And it's because... They have that su that deep desire of love to want to serve and want to help other individuals that I just I just absolutely fell in love with. And that was for me the moment when I realized that this is this is the type of mentality I should have. I know like we always talk about how how nice it would be to become rich, but it's like, okay, but to what extent? Like why 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 do you does somebody want to be rich? And for me, I know why I want to be rich and it is for that. It is, it is so that I can also do exactly what these girls showed me and say, who can I serve? Who can I, who can I help? Who needs me? Like, how can I be the Lord's hand and help others, help other individuals? And I just, I just really love that. And when I was talking with this Colombian girl about that, she talked about some experiences that she had down in, in Colombia. Um, and I just, I just love the idea that there's a lot of other individuals out there that are also wanting to help people that are in those types of situations. Um, and obviously you can get into the debate. Uh, there, there's, there's a long discussion you can have about 
whether um, some, for example, some of the prostitutes um, in South America, whether they want to or where they don't want to, whether it's like it's learned behavior or what. And th there's all types of different debates I can go down about it. But all I can say is for me, those girls showed me the reason I want to be rich. And so um, when I went to Ecuador, I tried to work alongside with the orphanage director because I want to learn from the administrative side, what needs to be done? How much does this cost? Uh, how much are, uh, do you spend a year in, uh, whatever. Right. And while I was in Ecuador, I thought like, okay, I, I have something that I can bring to these kids. I mean, uh, I'm from America. I can talk a little bit about, obviously I can teach English. Um, maybe, uh, but I can, I can talk a little bit about, uh, business. I can talk about social media. I can talk about, uh, marketing. Cause those are the, uh, I, I, okay. In regards to business, I'm still working on this one, but marketing and social media, I feel pretty confident. And I'll talk about that in another video. Um, what that I explain a little bit about what I'm trying to do with my business. But, um, basically these girls, uh, sorry, the, this, uh, this orphanage director told me that, a day, it's about uh, it, it's about six dollars per child per day in Ecuador, um, and he was talking about like the the repairs and showing me all that type of stuff, but the the system is so broken, it is extremely broken. And if any of you guys have been to South America, you will under, you would understand because when you you have to think when these orphanages or when these foundations um, when they bring in children. They keep them maximum until they're 18, right? And then once they're 18, they get put into another foundation is what they're called, like fundacion. Um, and they teach them how to write a CV, how to apply for jobs. But you have to think too, the only jobs they're getting are cleaning, are cooking. Because once they come out of these orphanages, all they know are how to clean and to cook and to play, right? That's, that's all that, that they know. And it just amazed me because one of the girls I talked to, uh, she did leave while I was there. She turned 18 and so she timed out basically. And she was talking to me about how, oh yeah, I just um, I just learned, uh, wrote my first CV and I'm going to be applying to jobs next week. And I was like, okay, great. I'm so glad that that happened. But it is a shame that you're just now learning about that. Uh, learning how to interview, learning how to uh, learning about different fields, right? They they don't know about any fields, and and I'm don't, I'm not trying to say this in a in a mean way, but her education, the her math level was the same math level that I had when I was in the sixth grade, and she was eighteen, like years of difference in education, and and I say that, um, obviously just to be honest, but also, the, and I'm not trying to like put myself above them. I'm just trying to say that it's a flawed system. And that's why I personally feel called to work in orphanages because if you, education is the main thing that keeps people in poverty. And I want to, I, I think that there's a huge change that needs to happen in the education system. That's another debate if we're going to talk about our education system as well. Also agree. But in relation to South America, that is, it is extremely, extremely difficult to come out of poverty just because the education is just not there. It is not up to par at all, right? I would talk to them about that. that this might surprise you, but the orphanage bought its first computer, its first computer when I was there and they'd been open for 25 years, right? So Take that into account. The, the kids didn't even know about YouTube, right? There is no, like, they didn't have anything to have online education. And it's because the resources aren't there either. And if you want to change something, you obviously have to bring in those resources. And so for me personally, that is my biggest thing. And um, I know that's going to be a longer video, but... Um, that is kind of my overall summary, very quick summary of why I want to be rich. And I hope that resonates with some people, some individuals. If if you really have done any like services or volunteer work, I, just send me a DM. I'm going to put my, my Instagram on um, the in the description just because I, I would love to just talk with a couple of you. And I know some of you have some amazing experiences. Um, and so just feel free to reach out. There. I really wanted to meet, start meeting more people because after reading those comments, I was just surprised. 
And so let me know, like talk to me, reach out to me. Um, I'd love to connect. Um, always love meeting new individuals, always love meeting new people. Um, but this is, I'm going to start making a little story for myself so I could see a little, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road of how my mentality has changed. But I, I'm almost certain that this is something that I won't change my opinion on, um, which is that money is only there to help and serve others. And so I hope this is um, something that was interesting for many of you guys. But um, yeah, look forward to talking to you and looking forward to hearing from a lot of you guys. But uh, until next time, ciao.